Was sub squad back at it again with another 90 day fiasco so where do we begin <laughs> so today we have jenny who's about one too many years too old to be looking for love but hey even the grandmas need some of that love me long time so i'm not gonna hate <laughs> on that so we start off with jenny who's getting rid of all her stuff and packing to move to another country forever at 60 yes you know what you do for love sometimes is unbelievable after watching this show <laughs> yeah i agree now jenny here has three daughters and four grandchildren who knows absolutely not a thing about the love of her life or where the beloved mother slash grandma's really going but uh she don't really care now where is granddaddy you ask dude is going like the wind with another woman so jenny's just trying to rediscover the love that she's been yearning now i really have no problem with that you know <laughs> grandma's going to get what grandma wants i just can't imagine my grandma coming up to me and going yo sauce i'm happy for you i'm gonna let you finish but grandma's gonna go get that poo tank so i'll see you when i see you pew but hey, not my grandma. Mine just got up and uh, left. No explanation. Hmm. <laughs> but nonetheless, let's see what Jenny's been up to, shall we? Let's get it. One day I was on Facebook and I got a friend request from a Michael Jones. Really? It would be the grandmas that would've fought for this. Does this dude look like a Michael Jones to you? You might've had a better chance of getting me with a name like Enzo Ferrari, Roberto Alejandro, Jon Snow the Frosty Snowman. Michael Jones? Really? Come on, grandma. If the dude's feet don't go back at least five years, the dude's fake. Faker than my Gucci slippers. Michael's attractive. He just seems kind of silly Bruh. and fun. I was skeptical, like, why me? Why was he choosing me? Especially when he's half my age. But I just went along with him. And this is why the oldies be getting scammed on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Michael Jones and I'm with the Internal Revenue Service. Whoa. Okay. You dummy. I don't even care if the dude was Michael Jones and he was standing there rubbing your twinkle toes for 48 hours straight. I would still be very suspecto. Well, it turns out, yeah, the dude was not Michael Jones. He had a secret. And it's something I still haven't told my daughters about. He confessed to me that he was actually Samit from India. You were being catfished? Pretty much. So we find out that grandma's been talking to some random dude in India when she thought she was talking to her imaginary unicorn. My Jones! Now I'm gonna go on a limb and I'm, I'm gonna say grandma probably knew someone was up. To be honest, it could have been a full suited up poly boy with a coin bag covering his Wu Tang Wu Tang. And she probably still would have said, Go. Oh. Wow, you're cute. I just think that's how desperate for love she is. Maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. Anyways, her daughter was like, yo, you really have no problem with this? I kind of forgave him for everything because I had already grown feelings for him. Oh, uh, yeah. Imagine in any planetary universe, parallel quantum megaverse, or any other galactic terms that was created out of someone's Uranus, that actually works. Probably never. But hey, not my grandma. So Ginny decides, hey, you know what, Yolo Stomato, and let's just drop everything, move to India, and be able to submit. <sighs> It's such a relief. I'm so relieved. <laughs> It's like a dream is coming true. All right, Grandma, let's not get out of hand here. It's not like we're going to Harvard or something. Anyway, so she goes to our financial advisor and says, I'm making a big move. Where are you moving to? I'm moving to India. Really? So advisor man was like, you're a little crazy, but how much you got in that bank? About 6000 Really? So after looking like a constipated deep fried chicken, mm, fried chicken sounds good right now. He was like, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Probably can last for about six to nine months. But grandma was like, nah, social security got me all day. Eh, wrong. Um, you will uh, not get your social security. Wow. Yeah, wow's right. Imagine working your whole life and it's about time to retire. Lemonade on deck. We're waiting for that government paycheck. But nah, let's move to India, lose everything and risk it all in the name of love. You dummy. So now we get to meet 30 year old Samit who works in a call center where they uh, gave him the name. I don't. Well, during the dude's work time, <laughs> he was talking to Western girls, specifically white women. I always love white girl. When I first saw her photo, I really fell in love with her big blue eyes and beautiful smile. All right, buddy, let's not get carried away here. So apparently both have been playing Mission Impossible. So Samit's gonna be the first to confess A's in love with a grandma. So, what's new? Uh. I'm getting married with Jenny. Jenny? Yeah. Jenny. Je 
That Jenny? Really? <laughs> that Jenny? <laughs> His buddies are speechless. She uh, be too. They know who she is. She's been to India. Bro code. He's been bragging. Yo, man, I just snatched myself a white woman. I have no clue why I just played Jamaican accent right there. But nonetheless, his parents was like, nah, as they should be. Because in India, they have strict cultural preferences such as... Girl has to be with the same community. Girl has to be... A younger to the boy. It has to be a arranged marriage. Perfect. Jenny fits the bill like a snuggle. Anyway, so the boys were like, Yo, Samir, what about your parents? You know, the ones that weren't cool with this? I'm not gonna inform my parents. You dummy. Okay, but remember, you gotta move in with your parents after marriage. I'm you have not living with my family after that. Oh my god! Alrighty, so best of luck to you, buddy. So we fast forward back to Jenny, and she's in the midst of uh, confessing to the Cheetah Girls, and she's gonna move to India forever. So, uh oh, Here what's go. going on? <laughs> I'm packing up my life and moving to India. Really? So the Cheetah Girls were like, what? Cause she's been hiding this bad boy. But look, do I think going to India is a bad idea? Yes. But if I was already two steps in the grave and I had to go, minus losing the government money, ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing. I'll see y'all when I'm dead, peace. <laughs> so her friend starts getting all judgmental. I would never do it. I would never, never do it. Do it. <laughs> never be with somebody that young. I've, I've I had that don't. opportunity many times, but, but I choose not to go there. I like how she added that little humble brag. I had many young dudes hit on me, I just wasn't stupid. Yeah, sure you did, woman. So Madonna was like, why would a young dude like him like an old woman like you? Oh, I know. He wants to come to America eventually and get his citizenship. And then he drops her like a hot pot cake. I'm not gonna lie, from this angle, you look like a dude. So Madonna, whatever you're doing to your face, stop it. So after getting blasted by her friends, Jenny goes home to celebrate her last Christmas with her family. But her daughters are very concerned about grandma's new in-laws, as they should be. His family, they don't like you guys together. How are you guys gonna hide this? Over there, I mean, will they try to do something about it? No, I'm be real, I, I didn't even know it was a thing that certain families in India would go that far. But when I asked my buddy who's from India, he said there's a high chance because it does happen. I was like, what? I'm blown. So despite the warnings, Jenny, who's already too deep in, was like, screw it, and hops on the plane. Boarding the flight to India. Time to go and be with Smith. It's a big sacrifice that I'm making. Like, who thinks they're gonna start their whole life over again at 60? <laughs> yeah, not me. Boy, at 60, I better be in Bora Bora sipping on pina colada and getting massages with lotion birth from Aphrodite herself. But hey, do you, Grandma? Just think about it. Anyway, so back in India, Mr. Summit is on his way to submit to his family and confess that he's moving out and heading to a new city. Which is half true because he will be heading something. <laughs> Just not to a new city, no pun intended. I'm going to the airport in a few hours, you know, to pick her up. And there's one last thing I need to do. Today I'm gonna tell my parents I'm moving out of the house. And that is it, I need to live them. Sir, you literally had months to do this, and you just magically decide to do it hours before your grandma arrives? You dummy! Anyway, so on his way to his parents, submit is feeling more than scared. Yeah, I'm scared for you. Asian parents do not play. It's none of that weak sauce. Clean up this room, it's filthy. Get the f out of my room, Margaret. It's my room, I'll do it. <laughs> Hell nah. See, if that kid was Asian, you would forever see that kid stand. Cause he won't have a booty left to sit on. It would be straight bones to chair. Clank, clank. They do not play. So Samit goes in to see his maker and <laughs> the camera crew kind of just chills outside. Smart move. He's already been in there for an hour. He's not answering. He's not answering, He's not answering at all. When does Jenny land? Half an hour. Half an hour. It's about an hour to the airport now. So the dude goes in there and he does not come out for like a good minute. I'm telling y'all man, he's probably tied up, upside down doing cartwheels while solving AP calculus for Elon Musk. That's exactly what Asian parents do. Y'all need to send our APB missing report on this dude ASAP. Now Jenny finally arrives after like a 20 hour plane trip and her submit is nowhere to be seen. Where is he? I don't see him. No, don't do this to me. Where are you? Uh, don't do this to me now. I don't know if TLC's faking all this for dramatics, but come on, really? She has a whole camera crew at the airport. You're telling me her camera crew can't contact his camera crew and get some info. Get the! Now, I kid you not, the next scene is straight out of a K-drama. Cornier than a corn on a cob dipped in un mexicano elotes. I don't even know if I said that right, but elotes are, ooh, fire.
All right, all right, cut the corny. So Jenny's down here, right? Bravo. So to go check out the apartments all nice and dandy. Kids are playing in the streets. Everyone's eating Skittles. Unicorns are flying over the rainbow. And everything's all Gucci. She then asks, yo, B, does your parents have any clue where we are? It's in their mind. It might be. I'm not walking. I am with you. I don't know why he said it like that, because that was creepy as hell. I am with you. What the fuck was that? Now my only question is, y'all supposed to be in hiding, right? And nobody's supposed to find out, right? Why the hell did y'all decide to shoot a reality TV show? Acting like his parents ain't gonna come knock down the door yelling. Fight down! But hey, what do I know? I'm just sipping soap.